This is Swiss and Chips, your British guide to Switzerland. Hello and welcome to Swiss and Chips. I'm Jo. And I'm Simon. So sorry we didn't make a podcast episode for you two weeks ago. Yeah, it's a long time ago, our last episode, isn't it? I know, it was almost uh, back when I was a child and we made a podcast. Yeah, then in 1996. (laughs) Yeah, unfortunately, I lost my voice. Yep, We looked everywhere for it and we couldn't (laughs) find it. (laughs) We went to England to find it, but couldn't find it. No, we were both quite, uh, yeah, a little bit ill, so... (laughs) Now we are kind of back, so we try it again. Yeah, exactly. So, in the meantime, we had a really nice email, um, and it formed the basis for this week's podcast. Yes, true. So you can always send us suggestions or topics you would like us to talk about. And uh, someone did. I'm not sure if we should mention the name because it's a tiny bit... I'm, yeah, I'm not sure if we should mention the name. That's yeah. why I took it out, but maybe you can read it. I will indeed. So, dear Joe and Simon, first of all, Thanks for uh, spreading the word about Switzerland in the amazing podcasts. You know, and these are not words that I put in this person's mouth. That's what someone actually yeah, wrote to That's us. also something I could have taken out. I didn't. <laughs> I just thought I dropped that in. Anyhow, somebody wrote, they're 30 years old and they're recently divorced from a non-Swiss husband after having lived in Switzerland for three years. This person would like to know how to meet people, how to approach them, and what exactly is dating culture in Switzerland like, specifically in the uh, German-speaking part of Switzerland? How does it work? What's kind of expected on the dating scene? So, yeah, basically, when I read it, I thought, well, it's kind of normal, like everywhere. But mm-hmm. then it turned out it's maybe a tiny bit different. Exactly. And also, I'm quite glad she said in the German-speaking part, because... <laughs> yeah, me too. I don't know how it is somewhere else in Switzerland. We can probably assume that the French-speaking part is extremely romantic and full of coffee and croissants and so on. And in Italian part, it is... Very dramatic and loud and (laughs) vibrant. Exactly. (laughs) Stereotypes aside. Yeah. No, I think it's... um, Obviously, as always, it's just one opinion, my opinion, my view, and how I see it. I grew up in the mountains and now live in a city, but already here I think it's quite different if you grow up in the mountain or in the mountain regions or in a city. Mm -hmm. And then I'm sure it's definitely different also in the French-speaking part or wherever you come from. Yeah. But uh, in general, I think it's a bit the same. So hopefully I can give some recommendations. Wonderful. Okay. So we had quite a long discussion about this when this email came in, actually, and talked about you know, how it is in England, what it's like here and, you know, what we know of kind of other cultures and so on. And I think one of the big questions, first of all, is, you know, where on earth do you find these people? If you're looking for someone, where can you find them? Yeah, I think we made a whole episode about how to make friends in Switzerland. So um, we put the link in the show notes so you can maybe listen to that episode if you want to make friends, yep. if you want to make a friend or <laughs> a girlfriend, <Yeah. laughs> then I, I think it's basically exactly the same. So you just go and look uh, in the real world, mm-hmm. ideally, I think. Yep. So you join a club or you go join sport or go to a book reading or wh- whatever, go yeah. out or go dancing, have coffee or at work or and the same possibilities you have online, join uh, groups or meet people or maybe you tweet with someone all the time and then you say, oh, let's go for a coffee. I think that's the same everywhere in the world. Mm. Well, here's the thing. Quite often in American TV shows, you see people who pick up other people in the supermarket aisle, for example. They're walking along and they start chatting over a can of baked beans and then they're like, hey, can I have your number? We should do this again sometime. Do you think that could happen in Switzerland? No. (laughs) (laughs) No. I'm also doubtful it really happens anywhere. But I mean, yes and no. I think the thing is, Americans are probably in general, or let's put it the other way around. Mm. I think the prejudice that Swiss are quite hard to get get to know, get to know, and so on. That's probably true because you, I think you have to make the first step then it's possible. Yes. But um, that a Swiss person approaches you like that is probably not so likely, Mm. I think. Because, yeah, the first step, we don't really make the first step. We are more in the back watching, neutrally. (laughs) (laughs) Observing for the best time to get involved. (laughs) Exactly. But if someone approached you like that, 
that would be, oh, wow, these people are nice and friendly. Or would it be, whoa, hey, what are you doing talking to me? Oh. I've only known you for five years. Depends um, if they approach me nice and friendly. Yeah. If they approach me nice and friendly, yes. And I'm in a good mood, then yes. Mm. And we're um, talking extremely theoretical here. Let's just yeah. mention that first yeah, That of all. can happen, but it's rare. Yeah. Okay. And you've also got the normal kind of dating apps in Switzerland, like you do in the UK and so on. Tinder and all that newfangled nonsense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> good. Okay. Um, how to ask. I think that's a kind of interesting question because as a foreigner living in Switzerland, we hear a lot about, you know, there are certain ways to talk to Swiss people and you have to be very polite and you should use this phrase and that phrase and so on. Do you think there's some kind of specific way that someone should approach mm. someone? It, you know, the danger of being too forward perhaps is an issue. How to ask what? How to ask them, <laughs> you know, would you like to possibly go somewhere with me just us mm. potentially in a romantic way? Yeah, I think in general, like I said, I think Swiss are not so easy to get to know very well. But mm. or I personally think they are. It just takes quite a while. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to take the first step and then it takes a while. So you would usually not someone you see for the first time. You're not maybe asking, oh, let's go for a romantic dinner somewhere in Paris. Mm. You might say something like, oh, do you want to go for a coffee or something after work? Mm -hmm. Or you say, oh, I have a party at my home. Do you want to come as well? Mm. Or, you know, or you say, oh, let's go to cinema. So you have a, uh, you go to see a film and then you go home and you don't really go together together. You just go as kind of friends. And then maybe the other time you say, let's go to the cinema and then have a drink. Mm -hmm. And then the next time you say, let's go and have lunch before Ooh, yeah. or then dinner you, before then and you then cinema and then a drink. Yeah, something like that or other things would be you might go skiing or hiking together a day out or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which brings us kind of on to, you know, what should you what should you do exactly? And you mentioned skiing there. Not an option for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> do you think offering to go skiing if you can't ski that well is a good idea? No. May no. Okay. Have, have you seen um, um, Bridget Jones? <laughs> Okay, so we had a brief intermittent uh, pause there while we switched to microphones. So if you're noticing a difference, well done, that means you're a sound buff. Anyhow, um, where were we? Yeah, basically, you were laughing too loudly about a uh, um, <laughs> film from Bridget Jones. Yeah, exactly. So don't go skiing, just do something you both have fun uh, with. Go hiking or uh, for a coffee or bowling or cinema or whatever, really, but... If you can't ski and don't enjoy it, then I wouldn't go. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any other kind of special things that you should think about? Number one on my list here is punctuality, for example. Yes, be on time. <laughs> no, I think in general I would be on time more or less. Maybe five minutes is fine, but ten minutes is already maybe worth a message. So more than ten minutes, I think, I, yeah, just try to be on time, I think. And what about the paying situation? Do you think it's kind of a traditional, you know, he invites you and therefore he pays or should you offer to kind of split the bill? What do you think? Well, also here, it's obviously it depends on the person and the situation. But in general, I think the man will probably offer to pay the first uh, the first date anyway. And um, probably you will then say, no, but I can pay. But then he will pay. So. That's basically how it works, I guess. And are there any kind of, you know, do not mention upon pain of death topics? Mm. Is there something you should definitely not bring up on that first date? Do you think that would be seen as kind of quite rude by Swiss standards? I don't think so. I can't really think about, well, you probably won't ask something like how much do you earn or something. But... No? Important information, no? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, depends on the situation, really. I just think... You just make small talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just be yourself, same as anywhere, huh? Exactly. Yeah. And afterwards, um, I guess, you know, people aren't even really calling each other nowadays. But uh, is there some kind of, you know, does it work the same in Switzerland as in other places? Like, you know, a few days later, you probably would have expected to have heard from them. If it's been a week, maybe two, then probably you're not going to get together again. Yeah, I think, uh, I guess, yes. But now I think it's easier because you have WhatsApp or something, then you will probably write someone. Mm. 
It's the same like everywhere, I guess. Yeah, and you can see if they've been online and looked at your message and haven't written back. And that's a pretty strong hint, no? <laughs> exactly. That, yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. Well, I think that's pretty much everything. You need to head out into the scary world of dating. You have got anything else you want to add? Yeah, we had loads of questions also in our Facebook group because we had a post where we asked if anyone has questions. So let's go and have a look and uh, see what people asked. Definitely. Yeah, um, if you're looking for our Facebook group, uh, it's called Switzerland for English Speakers and anyone can join. And basically it's a place where you can ask questions, you can ask for advice, maybe something weird happened or something great happened, you want to share it with someone who's in the same kind of situation. This is the perfect place to do that. We've got loads and loads of members nowadays and lots of people asking really good things and giving great input. So thank you to everyone who's helping each other out there. It's really nice to see. Uh, this is one of the topics that we posted there recently, actually, and quite a few people had some interesting stuff to write there. Um, do you want to read out one of them? Uh, why Joe uh, talked for so long is because I'm looking for the post, basically. <laughs> so now I try to read a few, yeah. Let's see. So, for example, Daniel, he wrote... Also, what may a typical date look like in the different regions of Switzerland? Ooh, I think, like I said before, I don't really know how it is in other regions, but I assume it's quite similar. But obviously, maybe in Italy, it's a bit more casual or you go maybe for a coffee or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Or perhaps a gelato. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then there is another question also from Daniel, where he says, uh, you know, if... I was wondering if this also holds true when dating and he means that the Swiss, it's very slow, everything. So to, I think we talked about this before a little bit. I think it's also true for relationships. Yes. But in general, I think obviously with my Swiss glasses on, I think it's quite hard to get to know Swiss people and, but they are, once you are friends with them or once you're together with them, they are, it's way, um, how do you say, more reliable or it's stronger, stronger relationship because we don't build it so quick, but, you know. Yeah, once you have it, we kind of say it's a friend for life, unless you break up, of course, in which case, not a friend for life. <laughs> no, but I get what you're trying to say because um, kind of, you know, maybe it's slightly stereotypically speaking, but Swiss people are holding back a little bit more. They're taking a little bit longer to get to know other people. And because of the kind of extra time that's invested in that, you would hope that at the end of it, you have maybe a kind of firmer connection. Exactly. Yeah. So another question we had from Alicia was um, whether both uh, guys and girls do the asking. You know, would it be unusual for a woman to ask out a man, for example? Yeah. And then she also says, what about chivalry? Chivalry. Chivalry. This is, you know, a gentleman holding open a door or throwing his jacket or his cape onto the ground to cover a puddle so milady wouldn't be, you know, offended in any way. Ooh, very good question. So for the first one, yes, both ask. We have same rights, same everything, same, same in Switzerland. So if you are a woman, go ahead and, you know, don't hold back. We expect it from women like we expect it from men i think so equality everywhere Great. and then the second chivalry chivalry <laughs> yeah chivalry mm. <laughs> i try my best here um do you know the knicker we should talk about the knicker one yes time. so the knicker is um ooh, let's talk about it someone else but yeah. basically that's a, a handbook you could say for what to do and what not to do. And I think um, this is still true. So there are rules and you can also see if someone behaves a little more special. Uh, he shows also to you how special you are, I think. So there are rules, yes, and follow them. Now everyone, everyone is thinking, which rules? <laughs> <laughs> and also, what was the name of that book? It begins with a K. We'll talk about that in a full, in a coming uh, coming soon episode. It's like a guide on how to behave, isn't it, in Swiss society? But a, a little bit old, outdated nowadays. Well, I, I, yeah, it's a book, or is it even also the author? I'm not sure. 
I'm on very thin ice now. So, but yeah, it, it's very old, but there are also newer versions written. And, um, but still many things are true. And it's everything written down. Who goes, who enters first in a restaurant and which fork to use first and all these things. And do you, are you allowed to blow a soup if it's too hot or not, for example? Oh my God. Okay. This is where I've been going wrong all these years. Yeah, you are not. That's the... Crikey. Yes, because there is even a reason with it comes with it. So you don't go with the mouth to the soup to the to the. Yeah, I'm going a little bit off the path oh here, God. but you don't go with your mouth to your plate. So you sit upright and you have your spoon in your hand and lift your spoon and wait till it's cooled down. Because if you blow, imagine if it would be tomato soup and you sit next to me or opposite to me. That's exactly yeah. You would be completely red. That, that's why you don't blow a soup. Well, yeah. And thus ends our simple guide to dating in Switzerland. <laughs> be friendly, make a move, and don't blow your soup wherever you do. <laughs> yeah, now is, uh, maybe we shouldn't talk in one of the next episodes about the knick. It sounds a bit boring now, doesn't it? <laughs> no, basically, there are no rules. Just be, be yourself. And I think Swiss are not so complicated. If someone is very complicated... Don't date him. Yeah, or her. That's, that's a good piece of advice, I think. <laughs> if, they're, if they're too difficult to get to know, then maybe you just want to give up on them. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so thanks very much for listening. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, as always, if you've got something that you'd like us to talk about, then you can write in our Facebook group, Switzerland for English Speakers. You can send us an email, hello at Um, Or you can also find us on Twitter at Swiss and Chips. Yes, and... As always, as well, just feel free to post in the Facebook group what you hate about the podcast or what you disagree, what you like. Mm. And yeah, because as I said, it's one opinion, my opinion, my view. So obviously, I am not re representing whole of Switzerland. So maybe there are kind of things that I forgot and everything. So maybe, you know, it's different with different kind of soups and so on. <laughs> yeah, for example, that cold stuff, you're never going to play that, are you? <laughs> Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Bye.